Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 8, part 2 under the topic Route Stability Criteria. Those who didn't see part number 1, kindly see the part number 1 so only you can understand the problem easily. I will give the link in the description. Here the problem is using the Route Stability Criteria to determine the location of routes on the S-plane and hence the stability for the system represented by the characteristic equation. This is our given characteristic equation. So from the given characteristic equation, we had find out an axillary equation. So this is our axillary equation. Why we are finding an axillary equation? Because in the route array we formed, it has row of zeros. So, we had find out an axillary equation, right? Again, when you look at the newly formed route array, this route array has row of infinity. This is a quite different scenario. So, what we are going to do is, we are dividing the characteristic equation by the axillary equation. The characteristic equation is given in the problem and the axillary equation we had just find out. So, this is our characteristic equation and this is our axillary equation. Now, we are going to divide. So, the division is we have to take the first term of the characteristic equation and first term of the axillary equation and we have to divide those two. That is s to the power 6 divided by s to the power 2 gives you s to the power 4, right? So, the first term is s to the power 4. The next thing is you have to multiply this s to the power 4 with this s square plus 1. You see s square into s to the power 4 gives you s to the power 6, right? Then 1 into s to the power 4 gives you s to the power 4. So I am writing the s to the power 4 under s to the power 4 of the characteristic equation, right? The next step is we have to subtract. When you subtract, these two terms cancel each other. And here you see 3s to the power 4 minus s to the power 4 is nothing but 3 minus 1 is 2, right? So 2s to the power 4, right? And the remaining terms you are writing as such. Then the next step is, again here, what is the first term? Here the first term is s to the power 5. So we have to divide this s to the power 5 by again this s square. So what will be the answer? s to the power 5 divided by s square. That will give you s cube, right? So the second term is s cube. Then the next step is, again we have to multiply. So when you multiply, s cube into s square will give you s to the power 5 and 1 into s cube will give you s cube. So, I am writing it under the s cube term, right? The next step is subtraction. So, when you subtract, again these two terms cancel each other and the remaining terms will be 2s4, 2s4 plus 3s cube minus s cube will give you 2s cube, right? 3 minus 1 is 2 and the remaining terms we have to write as such, right? And again the next step is here the first term is 2s to the power 4 and here it is s square. So just divide 2s to the power 4 divided by s square. What happens we will be having this 2 will remain as such here. So again when you solve when you <coughs> cancel you see we will be having s square right because 4 minus 2 is 2 again. So, our third term is 2s square. Now, again multiply. 2s square into s square will give you 2s to the power 4. And 1 into 2s square gives you 2s square. Right. And again, when you subtract, these two terms cancels each other. And the remaining term will be this 2s cube. And 3 minus 2 is 1. So, 1s square plus 2s plus 1. Right. Again here, the first term is 2s cube and we have to divide this 2s cube with this s square. So, when you divide 2s cube divided by s square. So, s square will give you what? 2 into 3 minus 2 is 1. So, the answer is 2s. So, here our term is 2s here. So, after writing just multiply. 2s into s square will give you 2s cube. So, I had written here. And again 2s into 1 will give you 2s. So, I had written here. Again when you subtract, these two terms cancel each other. And again these two terms cancel each other. And the final answer is s square plus 1. 
right so here what is the first term here the first term is s square and here again the first term is same s square so when you divide what happens s square divided by s square will give you 1 right so here i had written 1 here again you have to multiply so 1 into s square gives s square and 1 into 1 gives 1 so the answer is s square plus 1 again when you subtract our final answer is 0 right so this is our characteristic equation and this characteristic equation can be written as product of these two elements right for example just like this here i am having 15 so this 15 when it is divided by 3 the answer is 5 right so 5 threes are 15 so this 15 can be written as a product of 3 into 5 right similarly this characteristic equation can be written as a product of this axillary equation and this quotient polynomial right so here i had written like this right that is axillary polynomial multiplied by this quotient polynomial and the next step is we have to construct route array for quotient polynomial so here this is our quotient polynomial. So, for this quotient polynomial, we are going to construct Routh array. So, here the maximum power is 4. So, we have to start with s to the power 4. Again, we have to write all the even coefficients. So, coefficient of s to the power 4 is 1 and s square is 2 and s to the power 0 is 1 again. Right. And the second term is s cube. So, coefficient of s cube is 1 and the coefficient of s to the power 1 is 2 right so after writing this we have to find the remaining terms so how to find the remaining terms you see 1 into 2 minus 2 into 1 divided by 1 here i had written the steps so 2 minus 2 is 0 so the first term is 0 i had written here and the next step is you have to hide this column and you have to multiply right so 1 into 1 minus 0 into 1 divided by 1 is again 1 so here the second term is 1 whenever the first term is 0 you have to replace this first term by epsilon and you have to proceed so here i had replaced with epsilon then how to proceed you see epsilon into 2 is minus 1 into 1 divided by epsilon right so here i had written the steps so the answer is 2 epsilon minus 1 by epsilon then s to the power 0. So, how to find s to the power 0? This term multiplied with 1 minus 0 into epsilon divided by this term. Right. So, when this is done, you see here I had written the steps. When this is done, both the numerator and denominator are same. So, our answer will be 1. So, this is the Routh array for our quotient polynomial. Right. So, this is our Routh array and the next step is we have to substitute the value of epsilon as 0. So when you substitute here the term will be here this epsilon becomes 0 so 0 1 and again here when the epsilon is 0 it is 0 minus 1 divided by 0 right. So how it will be you see when you substitute 0 what happens here here this will become 2 epsilon will become 0 2 into 0 is 0 minus 1 divided by 0 right so 0 minus 1 is minus 1 divided by 0 so anything divided by 0 will be infinity since as we are having minus here i am including this minus here also right so only we are having minus infinity here and finally 1 right now you look at the first column of Routh array is there any sign changes here yes here there is a sign change 0 is neutral right we should not say it is uh, plus or minus but anyhow from neutral to it is changing to minus so this is your first sign change and from minus it is again changed to plus so this is our second sign change right hope you people understand this one from neutral to it moves to minus and from minus to again it get modified to plus so totally how many sign changes there are two sign changes Right, so here you have to mention there are two sign changes in the first column of Routh array. Right, now can you tell me whether the system is stable or unstable? Whenever the sign changes are present in the first column of Routh array, the system is said to be unstable. So here we are having two sign changes, so the system is unstable. Right, 
So the first part is over here, whether the system is stable or not. And the second thing is we have to comment on the location of the roots. So it is clear, right? Since we are having two sign changes, what it indicates? Two roots are lying on the right half of the S plane, right? Then what about the remaining roots? From the axillary equation, the location of the other two roots are found to be on the imaginary axis. Right. I have explained these things in our part 1 video. So, two roots are located on our imaginary axis. So, here we are mentioning that two roots are lying on the imaginary axis. Right. Then, two roots are lying on the right half of the S plane. Right. Because there are two sign changes. So, totally four roots are over here. So, totally how many roots? Totally six roots. So, among six roots, two roots are over. Therefore, the remaining two roots are lying on the left half of the S plane. Right. Hope you people understand the problem well. Thank you.